Hey guys, Coach Corsi here coming to you from Tagum City, Philippines. Hope you are doing well. Hey, I've had something on my mind that I wanted to share with you guys. And it is a concept of what is more important, getting stops or getting buckets. So I'm going to explain to you today three stories about getting stops. And you're going to find out real quick that I believe that getting stops is more important than getting buckets. Now, it doesn't mean that getting buckets is not important. It's very important to score as well. But as you get to the high school level and above, you realize that everybody can score. It's the teams that really compete and love that scoreboard at the end of the game are the ones that get the most stops. So I believe that getting stops is the most important thing. And I'm gonna to explain to you with three stories. My story, Grant Corsi's story, and of course, Tommy Mallon, that I've told a million times story of why I believe from the examples I've seen over the years that getting stops, if you wanna get on the court, getting stops is more important than getting buckets. And just to back that up even more, Two of the most prolific players and scorers in the NBA, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, both tied with the most all defensive first team selections at nine. Both tied the most first team all defensive player selections. Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, two of arguably the two greatest players of all time. So is getting stops more important? You bet it is. And I'm gonna explain as today as why. And as a coach, having a defensive first mentality is more important than a score first mentality. Having a defensive first mentality as a player is more important than checking your stats on how many points you scored. The biggest stat that you need to check is how many points did the guy that you were guarding scored on you? That's what I always ask my players. Not how many points they scored. How many points did the guy that you were guarding scored on you? That's the most important stat. And that's the stat that will either get you on the bench or get you on the floor. So enjoy these three stories. Hope you guys are having a great day. If you like this video, Please subscribe, so important. Please like, so important. And please leave, I love when you guys leave comments. Please leave a comment. Mm -hmm. Love it. Please leave a comment. And, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna tell you three stories as quickly as I can. The first story has to do with my career. So I was all everything, all San Gabriel Valley in high school. Most valuable player on my team two years in a row, my junior and senior year. All league my junior and senior year, yada, 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 all that stuff. But when I came to Biola University, I was there, uh, Richard one year, played one year, and I didn't play much at all. The year I played, I, I was the second or last guy on the bench. And so from there, I transferred to Vanguard University, thinking that they weren't at the level of Biola that I would immediately play, and I very quickly realized that I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna get on the floor. And so I decided about a month into practice that I was going to be the hardest working guy at practice. Every practice, I would be the first one there. I would be the last one to leave. I'd be the hardest working guy during practice. And I would be the best defensive player uh, that year. And basically, that's what I focused in on. And I ended up being six man that year, played a ton of minutes, played some minutes more than one of the starters. and. And, uh, and, and, and just had a great sophomore year, not a prolific scorer, but a great defender, a stopper, would always guard the number one player from the other team, and ended up having a phenomenal year. We did very well, went to the, the finals of uh, NEI District 3, and lost one game from Kansas City, and just had a great year playing. And, and I realized in my life that, that if it, I realized very quickly a player can get time just by playing defense. And there was just some mentality. It wasn't a lot about skill level or technique. It was just a mentality to get stops and stop people in order to make myself valuable for minutes. The second story is my son. So my son comes out of 
Santa Fe Christian, highly decorated, all CIF, all tournament team, played on the best club team in San Diego, on and on and on. And he goes to Biola as well for the first two years. And very quickly in the first scrimmage, uh, there's 13 guys in the team and he, didn't, he was the only guy that didn't even play. And so, you know, he went in and talked to the coach. I went and talked to coach, hey, what does Grant need to do to sniff the floor? And he said, Grant isn't ready offensively, but he needs to play better D. And Grant really made a decision right then to really turn the D up. And so he went from not playing at all that by the second or third game, he was sixth man. And then he became a starter and started most of the year. Now again, was he a prolific scorer that year? No, but he played a lot of minutes because his mentality changed. And I, and, and I told him, Grant, just make a decision to be the best defender, the hardest working person on that team, and you will get minutes. And he changed his mentality and he stepped it up. The coach saw it and, and he started to play him. Now, Grant had some playing games where he got double figures and got buckets too. But it was really his defensive intensity and turning that up and really focusing in on that, that again, got him on the floor. And I've seen this over and over with many players uh, over the years, uh, that if you really dedicate yourself to get stops, that you're gonna get playing time, even if you don't have the physical ability or skill level to get on the court from an offensive standpoint. So it's extremely important in my mind to get stops is more important to get buckets. You can get buckets later, but when you're younger, especially if you want to get on the court, you got to get stops. You got to show your value to the coach. And the third story is the one I've told, told many times. It's my favorite story and it's about a young man. His name's Tommy Mallon. Uh, he played for us at Santa Fe Christian assistant coach under Chad Bickley there, who is Chad Bickley's won a number of CIF titles at the, uh, Division one now, and very successful. And when, when, he, when, we, when Tommy was there, Tommy was, you know, arguably six foot, strong guy, uh, quick, but not, not excitingly quick. But one thing that he could do better than anybody is he could play defense. He could play defense like nobody I've ever seen. And I always tell the story about when we went to a tournament his senior year in San Luis Obispo, and we went to that tournament. So we go to this tournament in San Luis Obispo and he ends up guarding one guy during the game who's averaging about 30 points a game. We couldn't stop him. And he had about 16 in the first quarter. And so we put Tommy on him, even though Tommy was only six foot, the guy was like six five, six six, And Tommy only, I think he only allowed like another six to eight points the rest of the game. So long story short, Tommy gets voted by all the coaches as the most valuable player of the tournament that we won. And I think he only scored six or eight points for the whole tournament. Most valuable player, think about it. So he graduates and, and uh, basically Santa Fe Christian decides to make an award for Tommy Mallon called the Iron Man Award. And it's for the best defender. It's the guy that's just the, the toughest son of a gun out there. The best defender, works the hardest and and even today, I think they still have it. The Iron Man Award, the Tommy Mallon Award. He gets an award and Tommy didn't set any storing records, uh, uh, didn't do any of that. In fact, his uh, junior year, when I coached him, he played JV for me as well as varsity. And he would play most of the JV games. And an hour later, he would play most of the varsity game and, and be tired, but could, could deal even more. He had tremendous stamina, tremendous fight in him. And he had a, a desire and a willingness and an act to play defense like nobody I've ever seen coaching in my 25 plus years now. So to me, it's, it's, not even, it's not even something that you can argue with me that getting stops is more important than getting buckets, scoring. And of course, scoring is very important as well. But if you become a defense, if you have a defensive first mentality, you will get a lot of playing time, even if you're not an offensive, serious offensive threat. You will get a lot of playing time. And I've seen it over and over and over again in my career, my son's career, coaching at Santa Fe Christian and the California Bearcats for the last 19 years. I've seen it over and over again, kids that are not that talented physically, are not athletic, 
are not quick, can't jump, that get more playing time than people that are athletic, that can jump, that can score. They, they get more playing time because getting a stop is more important than getting buckets. At the end of the game, the number one most important statistic and the, the battle that you want to win as a coach and as a team is you want to win the turnover battle. It has been discussed by so many coaches over the years that if you win the turnover battle, you're gonna win most of your games. If you win the turnover and the rebound battle, you will win all of your games. And the turnover battle and the rebound battle all has to do with defense, defense first. And it really doesn't matter what the shot chart looks like, how many threes you made, how many layups you made. If you can win the turnover battle and the rebound battle, you will win a lot of games. If you win just the turnover battle, only one of those, you will win a lot of games. So you as coaches and players, you need to develop that defensive first mentality. It will take you very far in basketball. And it'll also teach you the essence of selflessness and also the essence of hard work. So in my mind, getting stops beats getting buckets. You wanna be a great player? Be that player that focuses on getting stops. And I guarantee you that every good coach will play you immensely. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. We love you guys. Be home in about three weeks. Looking forward to seeing everybody. God bless you. We're praying for you. Pray that we get through to the U.S. safely. There's going to be a lot of obstacles getting there. And just pray for guidance and miracles as doors are open here in the basketball world and as we look to impact young men's lives in a mighty way. God bless you guys. This is a great world. Stay positive no matter what and serve him first. Look up Matthew 7, 7. It is a tremendous verse. I believe you all enjoy it. God bless and go Bearcats! Hey guys, Coach Corsi here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and thanks for being a part of this vision for the future to impact our youth and the next generation. God bless you and go Bearcats.